hit New York, and that was Superstorm Sandy. And it, it devastated uh, many of the low-lying areas of our city, particularly in Brooklyn and Queens. And as you will know from Bridgetown, because this is true in cities across the world, when environmental destruction hits, whether it's a storm or the ongoing effects of, of climate change, uh, who does it hit first? Uh, the poorest among us? Those with the least access to resources? Those with the least access to those in power? Those with the least education? Those with the least skills to advocate for their own needs? And that's precisely what happened in Brooklyn where I was serving as a parish priest. And so here I was as a parish priest in a congregation that was not particularly large. Uh, we had had this Occupy experience together. And so we sat and said, what can we do in response to the abject need of our neighbors uh, in this borough that we love? And of course, our immediate ideas were uh, typical churchy ideas, I would say. Very faithful, but far too narrow in scope. And nowhere near approaching the kind of structural reforms that might lead to an ongoing circumstance in our city where these injustices might not be experienced during the next environmental disaster. So, you know, the ideas were, well, we hear people, people need socks, so let's collect socks, and we, people need undergarments, they can't shower, let's collect those. And um, we could see right away where this was going to go. It was going to be a pretty typical um, act of charity on the part of our parish. We would collect some things, probably, uh, probably put them around the baptismal font very elegantly on a Sunday, bless them, give them away, and then pat ourselves on the back for doing as much as we could. And that has been many of our experiences, clergy and laity, uh, in parish ministry. We feel we do as much as we can, and that the limits are not very far out. And then um, it struck a uh, member of the vestry that why don't we talk to these students who were so inspiring during the Occupy movement and see what ideas they might have in response to this natural disaster. And we did precisely that. We talked with some of these students, and lo and behold, they had all sorts of what I would consider holy and inspired ideas that had not occurred to us and that we would never have had um, the particular expertise uh, to carry out. My encouragement in terms of uh, engaging the spirituality of the city is that we as church people, I think, often get stuck in wanting to do things to people or wanting to do things for people, right? That the city has problems, the church is going to help solve, solve them, right? Where the city has problematic people, we're going to convert them. The church has a vocation in these places not to see problems as two-sided, that someone's wrong and someone's right, uh, that someone needs some, something and someone has something. We need to develop a sense of the giftedness of all of us, that all of us need help and all of us have something to offer. That's what, uh, what we talk about at home as the shift from charity to solidarity, that too much of the church's life has been characterized uh, by, by making drops in the bucket and then congratulating ourselves for doing something. Rather, if we spend our time and energies being at the tables in which decisions are made about the very nature of our human communities, whether they be urban or otherwise, and then partnering together with people wherever they are with the purpose of saying, just as we were told in scripture that God will never leave us or forsake us, the church will never leave you or forsake you when we're talking to the community in which we find ourselves. Yes, when we deal with the realities of the city, we face a lot of challenges. We might even say uh, the city can be sometimes a place of crucifixion, but it is also the place of resurrection. The two are both true. We're invited not to turn away from the challenge of these complexities that we often don't understand, but to move more deeply and faithfully into them, addressing our common challenges. And we will find, I promise you, that the city will teach us how to be holier people if only we will listen.